AEW's television deal. We got some backstage news on it. Sup, y'all? Welcome back to the review space. And all right, so we got some recent comments from Cody. Cody Rhodes, or, uh, well, that's not even his real name, but Cody, what is it? Cody Runnels? Anyway, Dusty's son. Dusty Rhodes' son. Cody, the man behind All Elite Wrestling, along with the Khan family. So it looks like, so uh, this is the article. It looks as though we'll be waiting later, later rather than sooner, for a confirmed TV deal as All Elite Wrestling AEW is reportedly in no rush to sign any one contract, according to uh, Wrestling Observer Radio. Um, however, it was noted that talks for a TV deal are smooth and nothing has fallen apart. The belief is that holding out will strategically benefit AEW, especially considering the new deal between the UFC and ESPN and the proven success of the uh, DAZN streaming services. Uh, these examples of synchronization between sports promotions and streaming services along with rights fees uh, for sports continuing to rise are apparently contributing to the, uh, the holdup from AEW. Nevertheless, it was noted that decision time will be coming out at a certain point and we will know a lot more. Regarding AEW's upcoming Double or Nothing, it was noted that um, there's going to be a streaming component involved so that people can watch uh, along at home as well as the traditional option of watching on pay-per-view. There are reportedly several options. The higher-ups in AEW have the task of selling their product to different streaming companies based off of the exceptional ticket sales they've seen in the potential TV deals that are on the table. In a recent interview with Wrestling Inc.'s own uh, Winkley podcast, AEW Executive VP Cody Rhodes mentioned that a major TV deal remains an important aspect of AEW's ongoing exposure. Rhodes expound only a bit further, claiming that their potential uh, their potential deal could create a massive shift in the pro wrestling industry. And this is what he said. This is what Cody has mentioned. I can't talk about it, but I know that I was quoted as saying, not by you guys, that a TV deal was not important. And I think that in the context that I was speaking, I was talking about how important social media and the do-it-yourself brands are compared to the traditional TV median. Rhodes explained that, uh, but I also, let's be serious, major TV is a huge thing, and it would be a massive shift in the pro wrestling industry. It would be a change-the-world-like move, but I can't talk about any pending TV deals. A lot of the info that's out there is very accurate about what we're seeking to do and how frequently we're uh, seeking to do it, but I don't want to discourage any future partners. I can say that people have been really calculated about how we roll out announcements. We want to be proper. We can't just uh, stand on the podium in Jacksonville and say, hey, here's the entire business model. Here's all of our plans. Here's an X amount of money. We can't do that. I know the business of, uh, business of the business is very entertaining, but I think if people put their trust in us like they have, we won't let them down. Okay, and uh, they, they plug the double or nothing here. It's coming up on May 25th from the MGM Garden in Las Vegas. So... A lot of stuff going on there. We didn't really get much in terms of uh, specific details, but in terms of they're not in any rush to actually sign any you know major TV contract or major major TV deal, and some something to do with the streaming thing. You know, it's going to be available for streaming, and that's cool. You know, here here's the thing with this whole TV deal and having a major TV deal. Uh, and having a wrestling program, a whether it's weekly or bi-weekly or whatever, basically a regular ongoing wrestling show on a major TV network. I do think technically that it's important. I do think that it is a big deal in the overall grand scheme of things because I understand that a lot of people, especially older people that don't really like to mess around with computers, they still watch a lot of wrestling. Uh, they still watch a lot of TV, I should say. They still watch a lot of television. Maybe not so much wrestling anymore, like the late 90s Attitude Era, but they still have a lot of, um, there's a lot of TV viewers out there. And again, the age, I think, has a lot to do with it. You know, older people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, and so on and so forth, they're sitting around watching TV. They're not really spending too much time on the internet. 
uh, whether it's social media, that's more for people of my generation. You know, the, 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 the so-called uh, Gen Y or the so-called millennials and, and younger. People that grew up in the, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, and of course the modern you know, 2010s era. People like us that grew up at a time when the internet was starting to take off, and when it really took off by the early 2K, and, and it, it, it just, we're kind of used to the internet. You know, and for a long time, for many, many years, you know, I remember the first time I got my laptop, and I got my laptop pretty late in my life. I was already, I think I was like 20, 22 when I first got my uh, first ever laptop back in like late 2010. And so by 2011 and, and, you know, since then, so for many, many years, 11, 12, all the way to, you know, pretty much like the modern day, you know, 2017, 2018, etc. Every time that I would want to watch something, whether it's a TV show like, a, let's say, a Game of Thrones or a Dexter or even like old Simpsons episodes from the 90s, I would watch it on the internet. I'd watch it on my laptop. You know what I'm saying? I would go on Google, just type it in, watch, you know, WWE SmackDown, you know, from the previous night, or watch WWE uh, Raw from the previous night, or watch uh, WrestleMania, you know, the, the WrestleMania when they start putting it up on, on, on Google. And you can kind of watch it on, uh, you know, streaming websites. And so that's what I would do. I would just stream a lot of these episodes, whether it's wrestling or whether it's um, uh, TV shows like a Game of Thrones. I would just stream it on the internet, on Google. I would just literally just look it up, and there there would be links there, and you would be able to watch it for basically for free. So you had that freedom, and I understand that not everybody operates like that. Not everybody has that access, or not everybody just ha most people. Or I would assume some people they watch stuff on Netflix. They would they they'd watch it on. Uh, it would be kind of like an online thing, but they watch it on a, a Netflix a streaming service on their video game system or on their um, on their TV or whatever. So they would have their own like little service. Uh, and some people they just watch stuff on regular you know cable TV. So I'm you know assuming that there's many people out there that still watch on traditional television that still have to basically sit down in front of a television set and still have everything you know kind of catered to them whereas instead of instead of guys like me who uh, you know I'd rather just stream my own stuff look for you know my own personal like favorite TV shows or whatever and look for my own you know uh, viewing uh, uh, habits kind of go out of my own way and stream stream certain things that I like but not everybody operates like that you know some people they they don't do it like I do, you know what I'm saying, the way that we would stream it. So, I, I, I get that, I understand that. It's just that, I, I don't know, for somebody like me, I, I don't really care about TV. You know, I, I don't care. I can't remember the last time I watched pro wrestling, whether it's WWE or whatever, on on my TV, on my actual TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I can't remember the last time I did it, on, on watching it on cable... And on, you know, on regular cable, and because re I haven't had cable in, since, like, you know, 2010, early 2011. Laptop is all you need. Like, the, once you have the internet, and you have pretty good internet access, and, you know, your, your internet isn't lagging all the time, and you, you just have a good internet access, that's all you pretty much have, all you, all, all you pretty much need. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be watching television and paying, constantly paying for cable. Or constantly paying for, you know, having that extra cable uh, 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 price tag. You don't got to be doing that. I think it's just a waste of money. How, you know, spending money on TV, basic TV cable, etc. is a waste of cash. It's just a waste of money and it's a waste of like... They don't even have good TV shows anymore on TV. You know what I mean? They don't even have that many great like must-see, must-watch, amazing TV programs anymore. You know, like I don't care. I don't care about most TV shows. Like, I got a few favorites. I've had a few things that I like watching on TV every now and then. But again, like, for the most part, it's like... I like, like, the first three seasons of Game of Thrones. I used to like watching Dexter. I used to like watching, uh... You know, like, old Simpsons episodes from the 90s. I still like that. Um, maybe an anime every now and then. Like, a, you know, old Naruto episodes or old Dragon Ball Z episodes. And even that, I don't really, like, get, get into that much a anymore. You know, so when it comes to like regular TV, I would say the only consistent thing that I've I've watched for years and years and years, in the past like eight, eight, nine, ten years, was probably yeah, pro wrestling like WWE. 
WWE programming, whether it was back in like 2010 with with NXT. I remember NXT used to be a uh, like a, a a contest. It was almost like a reality show contest that they would have on a weekly basis. This was way before they, you know, Triple H turned it into a uh, developmental. You know, he took FCW's formula and kind of turned it into the uh, the modern NXT stuff that we see now on a, on a weekly basis. But back in the day, it was just uh, it would it was it, it was the TV show that replaced ECW WWE ECW from. Uh, when they had that ECW reboot or whatever, when they revived that back in like 2007, 2008, 2006. You know, and that was on the Sci-Fi Channel and all that. And then that got re- replaced by NXT. NXT was, you know, they had guys like Daniel Bryan competing with, with Wade Barrett. And I think uh, uh, Ryback was another one. And, you know, David Otunga and a bunch of, a couple of other guys, Justin Gabriel. And it was just a, a reality show, like a contest show. They were doing like odd com- competitive events, like you gotta carry a, a barrel around the ring, and you gotta, you know, you gotta cut a promo for like a minute, and you, you know, you gotta talk about a topic for a minute. You know, here talk about uh, sand, talk about uh, wind, talk about uh, a paperclip, and you gotta incorporate that word into your, you know, promo for that minute, etc. And I believe that was... I want to say that was one by Daniel... Brr, no, no, that, that was one by Wade Barrett. I'm sorry. That was... Yeah, Wade Barrett ended up winning that one back in uh, 2010. But anyway. So certain shows I would get into every now and then on, on TV. But, like, I was never... TV just fell off so badly in the 2010s. You know, and certainly by the 2000s. It just wasn't that interesting. Like, I think wrestling was the only consistent thing that I would watch on a weekly basis and even pro wrestling like WWE programming wasn't that great you know what I'm saying after around I, w- I would say after around the, the mid late to the, the mid 2000s and then when the PG era came in by like 2008 2009 WWE just wasn't that great anymore it was just kind of mediocre but I just kept watching it just out of habit you know and I would do that and then when I stopped getting the cable thing stop watching TV officially and switch to uh, the laptop but by early, you know, late 2010, early 2011, and so I would just watch and stream uh, WWE for for many years for just you know stream it um, um, online on the laptop. So I didn't even have any use for for the cable TV anymore. It's like no need to watch anything on there. It's completely useless, completely useless. There's no good programs. There's no there. There's nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's, this is not like the 90s anymore. I remember when I was a kid in the 90s, I loved TV. It, it was like an escape. You know, TV was like, it, it was one of the few forms of entertainment that our family had. I did, you know, our family wasn't rich. We were very, like, basically poor. But, um, so we didn't have much as far as entertainment-wise, but we did have, like, a TV. So it was always like a, it felt like a, a a luxury or a cool thing to, to be able to see and watch uh, TV programs like uh, you know like when I was a kid in the early mid 90s it was TV shows like Eat the Cat and and Power Rangers and freaking uh, the you know the Spider-Man animated series from from the mid 90s uh, Batman the animated series and those kind of TV shows like superhero types you know X-Men the uncanny X-Men and all that from the early mid 90s and so as a kid it was it was we had some good shows for, for for younger kids, you know, even something like something like a Dragon Ball Z. I remember I remember seeing that back in like 1994, you know, when I was growing up in Asia uh, as a kid. I was in grade one, and everybody was uh, that. That was when Dragon Ball Z in in 1994 started to get really popular. You know, I'm talking about like action figures, posters, all kinds of merchandise, and and that was back when Dragon Ball Z was on on television. You know, head chala and all that. Chala, head chala. That uh, you know, the Japanese. This, I mean, this was way before uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z even made it to the United States and North American market. You know, with, with the uh, the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z series that made it to you know the dubbed American uh, version. So anyway, yeah. So there, there was definitely a few TV shows that were was really really must see. Like you had to watch them. You had to really get into them. You had to. It, it was. It was worth watching TV back in the day. And even wrestling. If you had access to wrestling back in the early 90s, that stuff wasn't bad. You know, WWF Raw on a weekly basis, WCW. That stuff wasn't bad. You know, I know some people like 
don't like. They they completely criticize the uh, the new generation era of the early mid '90s with Yokozuna and Lex Luger and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Diesel and Razor Ramon. And those guys were some of the better wrestlers. But I'm talking about like the you know the the crummy gimmicks and all that. Uh, uh, Doink the Clown and and like the you know Mantar and kind of the, the the cheesier gimmicks and all that that wasn't really like super amazing, but I don't know. I mean, I, I still have a kind of a nostalgic memory of like Yokozuna and those kind of guys. You know, Lex Luger and and you know that ninety three, ninety four, ninety five era of of WWF. I still feel very nostalgic about that because. You know, it's a part of my childhood. You know, and and the, they they were still gimmicks that were kind of larger than life. They still felt like cartoonish uh, characters. That was it was still cool to watch. You know, wrestling. Even maybe maybe if it wasn't like directed towards like it wasn't the cool stuff with the, with the Attitude Era, and it completely changed and became like you know the ECW influence and all that. It wasn't that cool, but it was still kind of cool enough for like a, a younger demographic. So anyway, um, TV in the '90s was. Amazing, you know it, it. It was still must see. The Spider Man series. I mean, the X Men series, the Batman series. It was still like, like some TV shows were still worth watching. Of course, The Simpsons. How can I forget The Simpsons? Again, you know, going back to the '90s, like the the classic Simpsons episodes from the '90s decade. I grew up on that too. You know, so uh, th there was some great television in the '90s, and of course, heading into the Attitude Era uh, of wrestling by. You know, 96, 97, 98, the Monday Night Wars, you know, 96, 97, 98, 99, early 2000, um, and then WWF against WCW, and it, it became must-see TV. It became so competitive and so freaking hot back in the late 90s. It was so incredible with the memorable characters, great promos, larger-than-life uh, uh, characters, you know, uh, uh, storytelling, a lot of character-based uh, segments and promos. Uh, very entertaining, you know, hot chicks, good-looking women, all that stuff was tremendous. And of course, like the video games were good. You know, what I'm saying that was at a time when uh, wrestling games started to get really, really good with WCW Revenge and then WWF uh, WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy. It was like year after year after year, the wrestling games they kept getting better and better. Between I think you know maybe around like 97, 98. 99 to, to the early 2000s. There was a period in there, like a four or five year period, where wrestling games got really innovative. And, the, you know, the grappling system, especially by Aki and, and you know, THQ based, uh, uh, you know, uh, grappling system, I guess that goes all the way back to like virtual pro wrestling or whatever, the, uh, the, the, the Japanese uh, grappling system, the Japanese video games from the mid 90s. But that carried over to the the, the Aki system of the uh, WCW Revenge, and then you know into the, the WWF games of uh, WrestleMania 2K and and No Mercy and the SmackDown vs Raw series. Ultimately, so you know it, there was so much uh, entertainment that was amazing back in the 90s. That's why I miss it so much. That's why people like me miss it and glorify it and are very nostalgic for it and and kind of romanticize it to a certain degree. It's, it was just a fun time in entertainment. Like, the music was still pretty good. Some TV shows were still really good and must-see. Um, and even some of the stuff that wasn't, like... I wasn't necessarily a big fan of it back then. I didn't really get into it. I would get into it a little bit later. By... by, by you know, When I got older, you know, something like Lex. L-E-X-X. -X, that, that was basically a sci-fi show. Kind of a sexy sci-fi show that would air, like, usually at nighttime on, on the sci-fi channel. Um, I think it's based out of Canada, like a, a Canadian, German TV show, whatever, sci-fi kind of thing. You know, kind of like a, a much more... It, it, it was like a 90s Star Trek mixed with a little bit of a titillation and kind of like, you know, uh, some sex appeal and, you know, very uh, physically attractive looking characters. You know, a lot of um, 90s-isms, you know. <laughs> Lex was tremendous. I, I ended up watching Rex, uh, Lex just recently. And, you know, that TV show started in, like, 97. You know, I think it was... It might have been filmed in 96, but it came out in, in 97, 98, 99, but, and carrying into the early 2000s. But I, I was watching the first couple of seasons, and I was like, man, this stuff is tremendous. Like, the writing was pretty good, the characters were pretty good, and this was from, you know, 97, 98. I was only in, 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 in the fourth grade. I was grade four, grade five, you know. 
I was 10, I, I, I was 10, 11 years old when all that stuff was, uh, when that started out in, in the 90s. It, it was pretty good. You know, I highly recommend people check out Lex if you guys get a chance. I think there's some episodes available here on YouTube, but you can just, just Google it, you know, watch Lex Episode 1, Season 1. You could probably stream it on, on some other uh, websites. Lex was cool. Lex was cool. Uh, Zev Bellringer. Zev Bellringer was a uh, was the main character. Basically, this beautiful uh, German girl that that plays the main character. This hot German chick. I, it's actually kind of funny because the the, the name Zev Bellringer ended up going to a, a female adult uh, actress, uh, adult film actress uh, by by the 2010s. I, I've seen a few of her videos, and her name is Zev Bell, Bellringer. I'm like, oh my god, that sounds really familiar. And uh, she, you know, she's doing a adult film movies and stuff it, it's a uh, basically an adult film actress in the 2010s took on the name Zev Bellringer it's, it's not the same actress obviously it's uh, completely it, it's a young woman um, probably in her in her 20s or whatever that probably I don't know maybe it was just I, I mean I don't know if this girl was young enough to remember the Lex TV show she probably was but <laughs> it's just kind of funny that uh, a film uh, you know adult film actress is uh, named after a, a fictional late 90s uh, sci-fi female character but you know it makes sense it was supposed to be a, a really sexually titillating character anyway so but anyway um where was I going yeah I was talking about the great TV shows of the 90s yeah yeah so I mean in the 90s there were still some good TV shows even something like Friends The Nanny you know these sitcoms like uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air they were fun to watch they, they, they still had some good stuff even something like like the dinosaurs. I remember the dinosaurs when I was a kid. That goes back, man, with the with the dinosaur baby and all that, and not the mama, not the mama, and all that. That was really that was a cool, like really nostalgic TV show. I remember that when I was a kid, way back in the day. That was see, that was back at a time when dinosaurs were huge. They were like it was trendy to have, like everything was dinosaurs back in the early nineties. For some reason. Dinosaurs became a big, profitable trend in the mainstream. Kind of like how in, in the mid-late 2000s, like, zombies became really popular. You know, like, everything was zombie-based. You know, you had TV shows like Walking Dead. You had movies that was all about zombies. You know, movies like Zombieland, the Resident Evil movies, obviously based on the video games, but they were still based on zombies. You know, you had uh, movies like Shaun of the Dead. You had um, uh, uh, 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later and so on and so forth. So you had a lot of like zombie-related things. It, b b by the mid-late 2000s, it became this profitable Holly Hollywood trend in, in the mainstream. Not to mention the video games like uh, 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 Dead Rising and stuff like that. So, you know, in, in the early 90s, that was the same thing, kind of the same thing with, with dinosaurs. You know, movies like Jurassic Park, that was the big one. Uh, A Land Before Time, I think that was the late 80s. Maybe that's one of the earlier ones that kind of started the dinosaur trend. Um, Denver, The Last Dinosaur of the late 80s. I remember watching reruns of that when I was a kid. Uh, Power Rangers, of course, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had uh, dinosaur-related uh, uh, gimmicks and characters. You know, Tyrannosaur, uh, Pterodactyl, uh, uh, you know, Triceratops. That, that was the gimmick, right, of the, uh, the, the dragon zords or the, the dinosaurs or whatever they're called. The Megazord. It would transform from these uh, robotic uh, 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 characters. They were, they, they, you know, T-Rex and all that. They were dinosaur uh, creatures, at, at least initially, the first season of Power Rangers. Um, what else was dinosaur related? You know, where back a dinosaur story. You know, uh, again going back to um, the dinosaurs um, uh, sitcom. You know, the the really cool sitcom. Really tremendous, like puppetry too. Like great special effects. You know, I think that that might have been by Jim Henson, the guy uh, who who did. Um, you know, uh, I think he did the Muppets, and he might have done uh, the 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 old movies like the, the what was that the. Crystal, Lost Crystal or something, whatever, that Crystal movie from the early 80s. You know, Jim Henson, he, he was a legend. He was a legend. You know, he's like a Muppet, puppet legend. Special effects and all that. Um, and so I think uh, that was the dinosaurs as well. Um, yeah, you know, even other TV shows like Extreme Dinosaurs. Extreme Dinosaurs and, and you know, the terrible thunder lizards from, from Eek the Cat and all that. So, you know, cartoons and all that. A lot of cartoons, a lot of early 90s. Uh, uh, cartoon TV shows for kids. 
there, there, there was a lot of dinosaurs going on, basically is what I'm saying, in the early 90s. So, you know, it, it was cool. It was very cool. It was very entertaining. It, it, it was just a different time, too, in, in, in the 90s. It was so... It was so easy to get into TV shows because, number one, the internet wasn't that big, and it wouldn't be big until, really, until like the late 90s, early 2000s. You know, I remember th that's when the internet started to get popping off, was when, when I started becoming a little bit older, when I was around, you know, 10, uh, not even 10, like 11, 12, 13 years old by, by the late 90s. So you're talking about 98, 99, you know, 2000. That was when the internet started to get a lot more mainstream, and certainly by the by the early 2000s, like you know, 2001 to 2005, when I was in high school, um, that, that that was when the internet became like just super common. It became a part of uh, everyday life, you know. Um, but certainly in the mid 90s, especially that early mid 90s period of of you know, 90, 91, 92, all the way to like 95, the internet wasn't a big thing. You know, there, there was no internet for most people because it wasn't main. The internet didn't go mainstream until like 95, 96, where everybody, or not everybody, but it, it started to become a lot more commercial, where people started to get PCs and, and home computers by, by the mid 90s. It started to become a lot more common, like, a, like getting a television, you know. So I think. I, 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 I'm still old, I'm old enough to remember a time in history when we didn't have the internet. The internet wasn't a thing. It, it wasn't a part of our daily lives. You know, that early mid-90s was, I think, the last, last gasps of, of that moment, of that era of not having the internet. You know, you still had to... You still had to use a payphone. You know what I'm saying? You still had to... You, you would still have an old-school style... Uh, uh, telephone. You would still watch uh, programs on TV, so you'd have to have cable. You'd have to have the antenna on your TV. You'd have to adjust your antenna if if the TV gets a little bit blurry. Um, you'd have to have. Uh, you, th there was no online gaming. You know, you couldn't play video games o over the internet. You know, there was no. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna let's have a match at, at Call of Duty. You know, or have a match at some online FPS. Uh, and, and play like Overwatch or Fortnite online, or play some fighting, uh, you know, some fighting game online like a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or, or or whatever online. We didn't have anything like that. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't a thing in the early mid '90s. You know what I'm saying? Like we we didn't have any internet. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't a big thing. I, I guess aside from a few computer nerds. That, that that was maybe going to college in in Silicon Valley or something like that, and they were having some some you know obscure online matches with with video games like Doom or something like that. Like maybe that's about the extent of it. But for for most people, the internet wasn't a big common thing in the early mid '90s, and I would say for most of the '90s decade, even well into the the the, the mid late '90s, you know '96, '97, '98, most people did not have the internet. And they certainly weren't having, you know, a ton of, like, online gaming back then. It wasn't that common. Yes, it technically existed, and, you know, you had games like StarCraft and stuff like that by 90, 98, 99, etc. But, you know, online gaming was, was very limited. It, it, it wasn't, like, super mainstream, and not everybody had a computer. Not everybody had internet access. Like, even our family got... We, our family didn't get the internet until, like, 2002, or something like that, like oh two, maybe oh three or something. It took a long time for our family. I was already like well into high school, like uh, like grade ten or something, grade nine or grade ten when when our family first be uh, started using the uh, the you know having internet access. So e even my family was really really late on the internet. So basically, my point with that is that TV was like one of the biggest sources of entertainment. Uh, aside from obviously there, there was radio, but radio was like super old school. Radio goes back to like, you know, decades and decades, decades ago, uh, the 1950s, 1960s, even before that, probably the 1920s and 30s with, with radio. So radio was kind of this outdated thing, even though, you know, I'm sure people still listen to radio every now and then, but like, uh, it, you know, in the 90s, it, it was kind of outdated. Um,. TV was the big thing. With TV, you had to watch everything on TV, whether it was wrestling, whether it was cartoons, whether it was 
children's shows, sitcoms, uh, even something like a movie. You know, like a movie would be on TV every now and then because it would be airing on television. Let's say, you know, Terminator 2. Watch it, you know, tonight at 9 o'clock uh, at night, you know. It, it would be the featured movie of the night. Um, and it was kind of like a big deal that it would air on television because it's like, oh, I never got a chance to see it in theaters in, in 1991 or, you know, whatever year it came out, T2 uh, Judgment Day. And so now it's airing on TV for free, and you can basically watch it on basic cable uh, in, you know, 93 or 94 or whatever. So those would also be kind of a special thing in the 90s decade. So basically the point is that whether it, it, it was something like a TV or playing video games, hook, hook, hooking up a game system like a Super Nintendo or a Genesis or an N64 or a PS1 or a Sega Saturn to your gaming system, for the most part, there was no internet. So that was kind of a separate thing unto itself, where where you you played games w without the internet. There was no internet access. You might have had some multiplayer, but it was basically just two or up to like four people hooking up on a on, on a single system, and you played basically just a split screen, you know, uh, video game, or you just played a single player game for the most part, which is what most of what most of us did back in the '90s decade. Whether it's you know Mario or Tomb Raider or Sonic or you know the the, the countless you know Mortal Kombat etc. Those kind of video games in the 90s that was popular back then, or watching TV and you just watch whatever was available. Whether it's you know they're watching they're showing a a featured movie for that night or a a a, a popular you know ongoing series like The Simpsons or you know South Park or something like that. So the internet wasn't a huge part of people's lives like it is now, where it's super common to have the internet. Everybody's got a smartphone or a cell phone now, where everybody's online now. Like, social media, everybody's got it. Like, everybody's on Twitter, everybody's got a Facebook, everybody's on, on some kind of social media thing. Uh, aside from me, because, I, I mean, I, I, I've never had a Twitter, I've never had a Facebook, I, I, I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> All I care about is YouTube. The, uh, YouTube is about the extent of my social media presence. That's about it. And that's only because I can make money off YouTube. I've got a monetized channel. I make some money off YouTube every now, you know, a, a couple of cents, a couple of dollars every now and then from YouTube. And I'm very happy for that, but like, that's about the extent of it. Like, I don't care about Twitter. I don't care about none of this stuff. So it's not a, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't think I'm missing out on any uh, of social media. I just don't care. Um, but the internet is so huge now and everybody's online now that it's not even everybody's online now so i i just i, I don't see any value in like watching wrestling on tv i just stream I, I just stream everything just stream everything so i get why like i understand why it's important for AEW and i'm sure it's going to be a big deal for them when they get a huge like tv deal but it's 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 2019. It's not 1999 anymore. Where you don't really need. I, I'm not saying you don't need it, but you don't really. It's not the biggest, most important thing. Like I, I feel like my generation, and even younger, it's it's more focused online. Everything is online. So, you know, I would rather just in some ways, I'd rather just have them be on YouTube or some other like stream for free website or something where you could just stream it for free or just. Yeah, you know, you can have ads on it. You can have advertising on it. And I get, I, I, again, I understand why they would want a TV deal. They, they would get paid a lot of money. It kind of like, you know, the, the Fox deal with WWE. They would get paid a lot of money to, to, to feature their TV programming on a major network. I get that. So that they could get that, you know, those ratings and all that. And they could make a lot of money off advertising. And they would get paid a lot of money by the network. So I understand that. It's just that. As the younger generation and somebody, I would say not even younger because I'm already like in my 30s, but somebody who's in the current, like current generation and, and the, even the people that's coming up, that's, you know, young, you know, Generation Z, I guess, they're all growing up on the internet. TV has become largely irrelevant. So I would say it they should focus on the internet and just... Somehow get some. I I just don't see the inner. I I just don't see TV as that big of a deal. I really don't. I just don't think it's that. 
uh, uh, relevant to the younger generation. I think it, it would just be best if they had everything available online where you know they could stream it online, they could market it online, it would be available on YouTube, etc. Because I think it's a lot better. Now they have to go viral. They have to. They have to get like a million views every episode. You know, and there's so many channels out there. There's like, there's some YouTube channels that get a ton of views. You know what I'm saying? Especially like anti SJW channels. Like they get like hundreds of thousands of views. You know what I mean? Like people like a Jordan Peterson or a Steven Crowder or a Ben Shapiro. Like these guys get a ton of views on YouTube. You know, and even somebody like a. Uh, John Oliver, he's not anti-SGW. He is more of a like a uh, left wing or a liberal type guy. But I'm saying like these guys, like somebody like a John Oliver who does have a, I guess like a uh, uh, an actual TV show on a TV network. I believe he's on HBO, if I'm not mistaken. But even he has an online presence where his videos w would get like 10 million views, you know, five million views, just a couple of million. Where these guys. It like if if you do it right, if you do it properly, if you got a really 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 must see really good TV show, and if AEW becomes this amazing show, they can have a couple of million people at least watching your program, you know, every time that you uploaded something. That would be incredible. But uh, you, you know they're gonna have to build up that brand. They're gonna have to have must see TV. It's got to be an anti SJW type of. You know, programming, it's got to be very entertaining. You can't cater to the SJ dubs. You really can't. It's got to be politically incorrect and it's got to be fun and they got to have some incredible segments and great characters and really awesome storytelling. That's what they need to be focusing on so that they can get those eyeballs watching this product. It's got to stand out. It's got to stand out. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on this uh, uh, particular, you know, potential TV deal for AEW. I know they're not in a rush. But I, I feel like they got to focus on that internet, that young internet crowd. So that, you know, in the future, they, they can, you know, market it to the younger generation so that they would have that fan base. But, you know, again, I can understand why they would want a TV deal to get that money, to get that, that you know, that similar multi-million, billion dollar Fox deal. I understand why they want to get a, a TV deal. I just feel like because TV is so irrelevant in my life, I just don't care about TV. I don't watch no TV shows. I'm sick and tired of TV. I'm done with it. It's archaic. It's outdated. Stay on the internet. Stay online. It's much, much better. That's it for this episode of Review Space. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, click on the bell button for the latest notifications. Until next time, peace.